you have the mic in here? Keep the door open. Is that noise all right? That's cool. Should we shut the door? Okay. Alright. Yeah, I'm happy. See I'm happy. Okay. Um Yeah. So Jay. You blown up, man. You got a lot of cameras with you now. It's like five of them. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Progress, I, heard, I, make progress. I heard you're a man who doesn't really like the camera too much. Yeah, I ain't really cool with it, but I'm doing an interview now, so it's cool. Yeah. But just the camera when I'm not doing an interview, like following you around when you're trying to eat and dig up your nose, that ain't cool. Downtime you don't like. Yeah, it. yeah. Jay, from the first album, the rumor was you're not going to make another one. Yeah. This has been going on. This has been going on. Yeah, it's serious two. now. The first album, you know, that was my idea. I wanted to do that. But I couldn't do it. I was the only artist on Rockefeller. So in order for us to get the jam, uh, deal with Def Jam, I had to sign uh, for another uh, five, seven albums, something like that, you know, with the company to get a joint venture. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, after, I absolutely wanted the last album to be, I mean, the first album to be the last one. But then after I signed that contract, I knew I'd be here to now. Yeah, but you didn't exactly deliver Duff albums, man, just to get through your contract. You, you no, no, I did my rest. thing. I love music, totally. and, I, and I, I mean, I, I absolutely did my thing. Yeah. As far as the album go, I wanted every album. I wanted people to listen to the whole album. Mm -hmm. I didn't want them to hear one song or two songs or one single. You know, I really wanted to just give part of myself with every album. And I believe I did that. You certainly did. You emerged off the back of. I mean, at the time you came out. Yeah. Biggie was already established. Yeah. Two that whole that whole yeah. two part Biggie film was already established. Yeah. Did you really honestly believe at this stage, two thousand and three, you were gonna be called one of the all time greats? I, I I absolutely believed it, you know what I'm saying? But for the you know, uh you know, the to see it just come to fruition is a mm. wonderful thing, you know what I'm saying? But in my mind, I believed all kind of things, you know? Yeah. You know, in one's mind, like you, you believe you know, I'm better than everybody. I remember telling my uh when I was real young telling my Uncle, I was better than LL Cool J. Like, you better than LL Cool J. And that was a man, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my uncle loved him. He yeah, was like, yeah. oh, LL, I'll mop you up. <laughs> I, I remember really young, I was like, that. Type. and you wanted to take him on. I mean, yeah. you come from Marcy Heights. Yeah. Marcy Projects. Marcy, sorry, Marcy yeah. Projects. You come from Marcy Projects. You put that place on the map, basically. Yeah. You're the most famous person out there. And um, you're, the first thing you, your reputation was, you are quick. Every producer I've spoken to, it's uh -huh. the same thing. I speak to Pharrell. And I said, what's Jay-Z like? I hear he's quick in the studio. Uh -huh. And everyone goes, he's quick, man. He's quick. As right. if to say, a lot of rappers aren't that quick. Right. And they nicknamed you Hover. Yeah. And we explain okay. to people why you Because, got I mean, like, what I do is, I mean, like, for real, it's an absolute gift. You know what I'm saying? What I do as far as recording. Because I don't write anything down. Sometimes I, 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 I'll do, I'll think of a verse, mm. go in the studio, lay it down, and be done in five minutes. Like, just be done. You know, some songs I just run through the whole thing. Just just run What's through. Head? You know, sometimes just one take. What songs that became big hits? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you literally did off the top of your head, yeah, honestly. Yeah. Didn't write a thing down. Never. Can you name one of those records? Every every record I've done um, since my first album. Like, I wrote a couple mm. things on Reasonable Doubt, but for the most part, um, I wrote maybe uh, two or three songs. I wrote Can I Live on yeah. Reasonable Doubt. I wrote it because the second verse someone else was supposed to do. All right. And then when we got there, I did my first verse. He was like, I'm not touching that. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me, do you, do you remember the lyrics of all your, of all your records? Really? No. Um, but I hear them over and over again. So, you know, it's, it's easy to do it that way. What happens with my, when I lay them down, I won't remember them. Right. Until I hear them. Then I hear them and I hear them. On the radio and stuff like that. Yeah, and then I remember them. So you could, like, can I get them? Yeah, that's one of my that favorite. was easy that's though. My, yeah, but that's one of my favorite joints from you. But yeah, that, that was, was really easy for you. Yeah, because that was like, can I get a huh? That wasn't even a lot of words. It was a one. Yeah. It was a, it was a flow. To, can I get a huh? Yeah, I was just following the uh, the snare. On yeah, that. I mean the uh, hi hat on that one. Is that you know how you saying? go then? So right, for yeah, like, this, this track here, uh -huh. your new single. What's it called? Uh, change clothes. Change clothes, right? It's, yeah. For us, turned it out again. Yeah. That guy's good. Man. He's amazing. No, that guy, he just, he made that in the studio too. Yeah. This time, like a lot of times, he'll send me the track, mm. and, and that's how we've been working. Or he'll have the track already. Right. But he came in the studio this time, and he made that from scratch. He sat there, 
just made that up from scratch. Okay, so your your mind process when you're doing lyrics on that song, how did it yeah, go? Yeah, I look at uh um me, I look at tracks like a puzzle, mm. you know, almost like that matrix screen. You know, I look at it. First thing I do, I listen to it, mm. and it's, I say, what well, what did that track make me feel? This one made me feel like it was a good time, like a groove. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just a good time. So. Then after that, I figure out what I'm going to flow to on the track, whether it's going to be the hi-hat or whether it's going to be the snare or the boom, 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 you know what I'm saying? I figure out what part of the um, song I'm going to rhyme to, and then I start from there, and then I rhyme to every little part of the song. I try to catch everything at one time. With that reputation, every single radio DJ must say, Jay, come on freestyle on my, on my show. You must yeah. be tired of that, I don't, be doing, I don't do that, but it's, it's more of an organized freestyle than mm. a freestyle, because I, I don't just go in there... Like, I'll sit there, I'll listen to the track, I'll figure it out, and i think about what I want to say, and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, then i go do it. No problem. Listen, I've got to ask you, your career's been phenomenal, 25 million albums sold, right? Yeah. In a short space of time, seven years? Yeah. An album a year. I yeah. was, like, sitting around on my radio show, doing my shows, thinking, all right, I love this blueprint, Jay's going to be away for one. No, you're not. You're, you're back in, within two months, I've got something else. Now, right. I normally, I'm going to be honest with you, man, I normally don't like when artists are relentless like that because right. it becomes like, you don't, you know, you don't get breather, but you, I don't know why. I'm, yeah. I'm standing on this video shit and I'm saying to someone, listen to the track, I'm going, the guy just sounds right on everything. When you go real gangster in the past, it sounded right. When you go kind of crossover, yeah. you've got a way of hard knock life, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was one of your biggest records. Yeah, absolutely. Now that's, that's the soundtrack to Annie. The right, musical, but right. You still made it right. Because and with every, everything that I do, you get me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Which is one of the knocks on me. Like, he makes the same thing. Like, a lot of, you know, people say that at times. Because whether I'm making hard knock life, mm. whether I'm making chain flows, whether I'm making song crowd, whether I'm making streets is watching, mm. within, within that music, you still get me. I'm still myself. You know what I'm saying? When I was doing It's a Hard Knock Life, I wasn't singing butterflies. No, I was truly, talking truly. about where I'm from. I was yeah. talking about Marcy Prizes mm. and the Hard Knock Life. And the reason why everybody related to it, because everybody grew up in you know, tough neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and they had hard knock lights and stutter kisses. They, they, they related mm -hmm. to the whole story. Like, so within, with Annie on the hook, you still got Jay-Z. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So with this song, even with the change clothes, it's a groove, yeah. but you're still getting Jay-Z. You've getting... mastered the art, though. You know what I'm saying here? This is the businessman thinking now. You've uh -huh. mastered the art of going mainstream, but keeping your integrity intact. Right. Not a lot of people have been able to do that. Right. A lot of people have fallen off by trying to be mainstream. Right. What's the secret? Because they lose part? themselves within within trying to be main. Like when you try, I don't I like. I'm not trying to make a mainstream record. I'm right here. When I heard this track, I just try to make a record that feel good. Yeah. Like when I made, can I get it? The hook was, can I get a fuck you to the video? like? It was yeah. the yeah. worst. Go, vulgar hook ever. Yeah. It wasn't meant to be a huge record. Yeah. It turned out to be a huge record. Like if you listen to that hook, if you heard that hook in the studio, mm. you would never say that record right there is going to be, be number one for 13 weeks on a pop record on a pop chart. True. No, you no. would never say that. It was that an underground track hook. to me. Yeah, it was quite an underground track to me in that so, respect. But. So, the, the, like those records just turn into those mm. things. You know what I'm saying? So other people would they try to make. A crossover record. Yeah. So when you try to make a crossover record, you can't fool the audience. You can feel when the record is not genuine. You can feel when it's doctored or when it's put together. Or you can feel when someone's just in the studio, just going through the motions, right? Right, having fun. Just. You've got it down to a fine art. Why are you getting out of the game? Um, it's just my time. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I felt like I've done anything. I just don't want to get to the point where I'm making. I love music so much. Mm. I don't ever want to get to the point where I'm just making music to make money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want to do it. I want other people to make hot albums. I want other. I want. I want to be inspired by um, other works. You know what I'm saying? I gotta be honest. Like I don't want to knock hip hop because you know I'm gonna knock nobody in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? But like I'm not as inspired. Like I want to just be inspired. I want people to come out with hot albums so I can come out with another. Are you, are you truly dis seriously? Are you truly disappointed with the way hip hop's? Gone that it hasn't been that consistent. I don't look at many. I just think I just think, I just, that think I just think that we we were going away from making albums mm. and, and, and make when we make a record, we make the club record, the yeah. girl record, the thug yeah. record. Yeah. You know, it, you, the album doesn't have any consistency. You can't listen to an album when someone is trying to do this and then try to do that. It has to flow naturally within it. People are complex. Like within the course of your day, you do a lot of different things. You just gotta stay true to what you're doing, and then you can you can reach all those emotions. But they're trying to do it 
unnatural. So no one is making albums anymore. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like. But you're also in a weird situation where you started Rockefeller Records, mm -hmm. which you know. The romanticism of that story is the fact that you made an album to go on your own label in right. order to get signed, because right. you didn't get signed, which right. makes total sense. Right. Now that's your baby really, right? Right. Do you really feel that the fact that you earn so much more from the clothing line uh -huh. than the record company uh -huh. is exactly what might be going wrong with hip-hop today? I mean, it sounds weird because it's, right. it's made you extremely rich, but right. do you know what I'm saying? Right. It you seems think odd people to me. have other, di other, other priorities and other well, shit? Like like so, hip hop becomes second. Is well, that the fact that you can make a they, 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 Reebok made a trainer for you. Yeah. It's the fastest selling trainer in history, faster right. than Jordan. Right. Come on, man. Yeah. I mean that. That yeah. tells me that. Well, hang on. Where's the priority? Here? I don't know. Is that right. to, what's that got to do with music? Right. Jay Z is a walking commodity now, man. Right. People want to buy into you. So. Right. But I, I've, I've always been like that. You know what I'm saying? As far like I've, I've always been like that. I remember. How Rockefeller got started, I used to be talking about this uh, clothing line for Iceberg. Just talking about it, just in, just just within describing everything that was in the room when I was rapping. You know, looking at myself, and I had on the Iceberg, and then I go to concerts, I see everybody in Iceberg. So that's how Rock, Rockaway actually got, got started. We tried to get a deal with Iceberg, they turned us down. We was like, okay. Yeah, we'll come back. Fine. <laughs> You stay right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying? So uh, it all, it's always been like that, but music has always yeah. been my first love. It has never, ever interfered with the music I make. You know what I'm saying? My album, you listen to every one of my albums, even my whack, my so called whack, my worst album has has at least five songs. Which one are you going to say that is? The second Is that the second one? The second one the second, was that second or third you're saying? I think the second one would be the worst one, but, but, but I just think I did the album wrong. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I think it was a lot of stuff on that album. I just did it more. I, the approach. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was trying. That's I was trying to go somewhere. Because can I say? Can I always yeah. wanted to ask you about this? Was that because at that time, Bad Boy was sampling big time. Uh, everybody was sampling. Was everybody Bad, was sampling too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. It, what happened was really I had did what I what I felt was the album of my life. Mm. Reasonable doubt. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, at that time, I mean, it, didn't, it wasn't selling. Yeah. I mean, it sold, but it wasn't selling. It was a gold album instead of a yeah. platinum album at the time. Right. right? Um, thanks for you know making reason to go platinum. That was my baby right there. I needed that one to go platinum. But <laughs> you know, it wasn't selling. So yeah. now here I am on the next album. Like, I can't do that again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? These guys is blowing crazy. Puff is blowing. He mm. has eight video. Mm. He has a number one, three, five, six video on TV. I'm like. Yeah. I gotta figure this out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so I understand what rappers today are going through. Cause I went through the same thing. But my yeah. thing was when I did that, I was like, that ain't me. Mm. Let me go back to what I do. It clearly it, wasn't you, man. I, I, yeah, that ain't me. Yeah. Excuse me. So I went back and I shot Streets is watching. Mm. Let's get back to what I do. Then I came out volume two. I just went and did my thing. So that's what I just want artists out there to do. You know what I'm saying? That's what hip hop is about. Like, no, I'm not. Don't follow that, man. If that yeah. man doing that, you do this. Isn't it easier because that was your label, though? You yeah. were making records yeah, on your own label. Yeah. Some artists aren't yeah, making records true. on their own that's label. True. Hey, that's true. That's absolutely true. Eight I, people I, telling them what to do and what they need. I believe the re I believe the um, record labels have a big, has you know a big part in that. Absolutely. Now the fact that you you know a three prong sort of attack running your whole corporation, Kareem, yourself, and Damon Dash at the time. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You know, I did stuff with Damon recently. Yeah, yeah. Damon was saying that he feels that, that you may be seriously hanging up the mic, and, yeah. like, and there's lots of rumors around you and Damon. No yeah. question. I mean, a lot of rumors saying that you guys are splitting up. You guys don't see eye to eye anymore. Right. But you know, I'm looking at Rockefeller as the apple, right. and Rockwell, thinking no one's going to walk away from that kind right. of guy. Right. So right. Nobody's your stupid. Yeah, you know what's your take like, on the whole thing? My whole thing is. Um, me and Dame, as you, I mean, you've interviewed both of us. Mm. We're polar opposites of each other. Completely opposite right. personality. That's right. my brother. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm a godfather. I'm a godfather to the son. Mm. You know what I'm saying? For the, that's that's forever. Me and him did. We fulfilled our dream. We started out to make a record label, and we we've accomplished that goal and so much more. We have nothing to ever be mad at each other. What we do have is an entrepreneurial spirit. Spirit. Both mm. of us. Both of us had this thing inside to create something all mm -hmm. the time. So for that to be in one house, it, it's too much. Like, yeah. Dame wants to do Dash films. Mm -hmm. 
I want to do SC clothing line and I want to do things on my own. So when people see that happen, it's like, oh, this is big. This, oh, these guys yeah. are, are crazy. And you know, when me and Dane came in this business, our only goal, we would wake up, eat, sleep, and drink Rockefeller Records. We'd get in the van, drive to Maryland, We'd drive anywhere, trying to, trying to make it something happen, make people know the name Rockefeller. Yeah. So now we got so many different things, so we're not together every day. You know what I'm saying? He's doing an interview with Trevor Nelson. I'm way over here doing what I'm but doing. But the odd thing was that day that we met. But we come together when, we it's, were in a family, when it's family business. Yeah, flying off. You were going to Beanie to see Beanie at court. He right. was off to see Beanie. He wasn't sure you were going anyway. Right. And, he, and all of a sudden you were in the queue to get into the courtroom right. to support Beanie Siegel. Right. He was on a serious charge. So right. that met, further made me think, well, well, they don't know what each other are doing at the moment. Right. But they end up, Rockefeller right. end up bringing them back together. That yeah. was a bit of a strange thing. Yeah, though. yeah. How'd you find that day? Like, like that's that's how it always is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Whenever it's family business, we don't come together and handle family business. Like, we might be in London or whatever, yeah. but if someone something is happening, something is serious, I'm going to be there for him, he's going to be there for me. We're going to be there for, for all our artists. Well, Beanie was here today. We caught Beanie just for Yeah, a he, he, he's on house arrest. I, I, he's got a tag around yeah, his ankle. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's walking on the catwalk. It's, the tag's going off. Beep, beep, beep. I'm like, <laughs> 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 yeah, but Beanie's like, the, the, but, but the thing about you, everybody says, I speak to a lot of people, I say, Jay-Z, do you know the guy's a nice guy? You know, people can't believe a hip-hop, you know, pioneer almost, which is what you are for the, for the 90s anyway. You can be such a nice guy. Right. Um, but the nice guy has been up on charges. The nice guy has been involved in situations. Yeah. You even admit you had to hustle as well. Yeah. You've you've had to answer for hip hop in terms of guns and you right, know where right. you stand. Where do you stand with the, the same issue of, um, of you know you, you're, you're bailing out? You're trying to bail out one of your own artists on Rockefeller Records for right. a major charge, basically. Right. My thing is like we we we're all people from urban areas. You know what I'm saying? And and, and there's a lot of things. Once you sign a contract. Those things don't go away. Like it ain't like you sign a contract and you become invisible. You know, or you or you could just cut off all those attachments and cut off your whole life. You know, you're 25. You sign a contract. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, you don't just cut off 25 years of your life. That's a lot of cleaning up. You know what I'm saying? And it's a constant thing. Like you can know better, and the next day someone could push your button. Like they could do it on purpose, and you just lose your mind. So you have to always be. You have to always be alert, and you always have to, you have to consciously keep yeah. yourself out of bullshit. I mean, basically, you were on the street at one point, yeah. hustling with Dame. Mm -hmm. But within five years, man, you're living large. You've got probably in the yeah. Hamptons or wherever, and you've right. got a lot of money in the bank. Is there not a sort of point where hip hop artists or rappers just go, you know what? I can say no. I don't care if he's disrespecting me. That doesn't matter to me. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yes, you have to do that. That's what I mean. Exactly. You have to do that constantly. Like, but you get this right. though. You yeah, get you get yeah. that. It don't matter. I'm a grown man now. Before, I, before huh. I'd be like, man. But right now, like, what does what does that matter? I know who yeah. I am. Yeah. I know who I am. I know what I've done and I know what I've been through. Nobody can never take that away from me. You can't take that away from me by looking at me, Tom. Well, you proved it with Nas. Yeah. Because that was a, you know, that classic yeah. beef you had with Nas was yeah. on record, unlike right. other yeah. classic beefs. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. People who love hip hop liked it. Right. Yeah, that's, what I, that's what I just let people know right there. Like, mm. although at sometimes they got hairy and people said things that got yeah. out of context of hip hop, yeah. it still was like, if I see the guy, I'm not going. I don't want to do nothing to him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, it's all cool. It's just rap. It's just music. Now, the other thing about you making this your last project is the fact that people are going, well. You know, Sean's always been a nice guy. He was always going to find a nice girl at the end of the day. And he was always going to just call cool out. You know what I mean? Yeah, now, yeah. I know B really well. I've always interviewed her. Yeah. And she's always been the nicest. You know, just straight up. You, you know she ain't bullshitting you. You know when she's, she's right, a dream right. type girl. Right. So, has she softened you? Nah, we, we talk about that right now. But I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I just say, I just say yeah. life in general. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like I mean... There's a lot. Let's it's it's just, just say there's a lot of things around me. You know what I'm saying that got me in a good space. But just, just, just maturing and just growing up. You know what I'm saying and just knowing. And I believe that everything I went through, mm -hmm. like in '99, mm -hmm. um, that that was my wake up call. You like be 
Don't think it all can be taken away like that. What was the incredible thing that happened in 99? You know, when I went through the whole thing, it was the whole Kit Kat Club, yeah. and then the whole, you know, the press the and the court case yeah, and sure. all that. That right there, I yeah. was like, wow. It was on the front page of every paper. Mm -hmm. I, that's when I knew, I was like, I'm, I'm famous. <laughs> like, like I knew, I knew people bought my records. I didn't yeah. know I was famous. Yeah. Like, yo, yeah. I'm really yeah. famous. Like, at front page of every paper, uh, every news channel. I was like, I, I gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta get myself together. Is that what affected you the most? Really? Yeah, really. So that made, that right out. there was like, that's it. Because you did say that your mum never really took it too seriously until she heard you were working with Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you yeah, that was her point. That was her turning point. That for me was my turning point. But that. That right there, when she heard I bring Michael Jackson out on the stage, and she was like, yeah. "Who are Amazing. you? Yeah, you're my son. My God, Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> you did a tour. You did the Hard Not Life tour, which yeah. was celebrated as at the time the biggest hip hop tour ever. Yeah. And um, you really pulled it off, and it was an important tour to pull off to show that you know violence right. doesn't follow hip hop everywhere it goes right. and stuff like that. Columbine happened. Right." which was a tragedy in America, and right. you donated, you along with DMX. Right, like, what, like the, whole, the whole lineup, Method Man, Red Man yeah. too. Um, but it was either, it was two things, it was like, we, we was going to Colorado, it was like either we cancel the show, yeah. or we give these uh, kids an outlet, you know, something for at least two hours to take their mind off what's going on, and um, you know, donate the money we made. We wasn't trying to make money that night, you yeah. know what I'm saying? We know what they was going through, we felt their pain, so we went through and we entertained them. Took their mind off of whatever was going on for that two hours, and we, um, I went to everybody like, yo, this is what I'm doing, you know, yo, one of y'all want to do it. I mean, without a second guess, yeah. Without even like, I don't know about that one, be that's a lot of money tonight. Like, yeah. without a second guess, everybody was like, yeah, absolutely, really? it was the right thing to do.